Hey there, winos. This is Vince.Wine, and today I want to answer a question that a lot of us as wine drinkers face, which is how long can you keep wine stored after you've popped the cork? Well, in order to answer this question, I've set us up a little experiment. I've taken two wines, a white wine and a red wine, and I opened them up five days ago and then closed them back up in different ways to test different closures and how they hold up. So for my white wine, I've taken an inexpensive white wine. This is Muscadet. It's about a $10 wine, uh, but it did take 90 points. I did want sort of a quality wine just so that um, this is a fair reference. Similarly, for our red wine, I've taken an inexpensive Bordeaux. Uh, again, about $10 to $12 price range, but still with pretty positive reviews toward its quality. Okay, here's what I've done. I've taken the same wine and opened it three times and closed it in three different ways. With the first one, I just simply placed the cork right back in. With the second bottle, I used a little air pump to pump the air out of the bottle and store it that way. And with the third bottle, I used a device that pumps argon gas into the bottle and it allows me to not even have to open the cork. So now five days have passed and it's time to pop these bad boys open and get a look at how they actually held up. But before we do that, I want to go back five days ago to see what were they like when I first opened them. This way we get a really good comparison. With that, let's go visit the past. Hey there winos, this is Vince.Wine from five days ago. Now, Future Me wants me to go ahead and give these wines an initial taste, which is perfect because current me really wants to drink. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with uh, the white wine first. Uh, you always wanna start with the lighter wine uh, and then move on to your heavier reds. <laughs> I kinda meant to just do a tasting. Uh, looks like I'm gonna do a drinking, but uh, hey, you know. Actually, check this out. Uh, see all those little floaty things that are in there? You might almost be able to see the effervescence in here. Um, now those are, I, I guess they're bubbles to be honest. I don't know exactly what that is, but whenever I see that, I know that I'm getting an effervescent wine. Now it's gonna start to rise up. This is not a sparkling wine. This is a still white wine, but I know that that's gonna translate as something almost, um, again, lively or maybe slightly crisp or very crisp or bubbly. Um, on the palate. Yeah, the wine is clean, no flaws. There's a really pretty medium intensity on here, so I don't have to get too close to the glass to smell it. I can smell it from right here. Some kind of like a tropical fruit, like melons and uh, like honeydew. Wow. Oh, that's really good. It is really quite crisp, exactly what I was expecting. Sort of that um, almost effervescence happening on the palate makes it really refreshing, especially on a super hot day like this. I was looking for almost like a pepperiness, but it ended up being almost more salty on the palate. So I definitely would want this with, um, I'm thinking like fish, almost like fish tacos. It's kind of zesty. And no wonder why it gets such a high rating. And in case you didn't know, this little guy right here uh, is the blade is used to cut the foil. So that's what I've been using to pop the foil off of the bottle. <sighs> Clean. Clean. Okay, I'll go ahead and move over to the red wines now. Okay, so the wine is clean and it's got a medium intensity as well. We have a saying in my house, definitely French. So it's got a lot of that sort of aged character or profile of fruit, really aged berries, aged red and black fruit surprisingly kind of creamy from a little bit of oak influence there, but otherwise your typical like earthy, deep gravel and dark black fruit, typical of Bordeaux. Pretty good and clean. Clean. <sighs> clean. Okay, I'll go ahead and get these all closed up now, and I'll let future Vince take it from here. By the way, future me, please get a haircut. Welcome back. And yes, I did get a haircut, you jerk, and it does look good if you do say so yourself.
Okay, without further ado, I'm really excited to check out what happened to our wines. How did they hold up after five days? We'll go ahead and start with our white wines here. So this one, I've kind of had the cork open for maybe the last 10 minutes or so. Okay, sample number one. This was the wine that all I did was put the cork right back in it. The intensity is still there, so it's still pretty vibrant. I can still get a lot of um, the ar aromatics jumping out of the glass, so that's a good sign. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised that the structure is still kind of there. It has a lot of that sort of effervescence that we were talking about. Even after five days, I'm really impressed because to be honest, the first thing that I thought was going to happen was that all of that um, structure would kind of fall out of the wine and it would be a little flabby. The flavor is just slightly washed out. It, it, it's almost as if the flavor went flabby instead of the structure. Kind of weird. I thought it would be the, the opposite way, but I don't get anything like um, refrigerator taint or it doesn't really smell oxidized. That is when too much oxygen has interacted with the wine and sort of picture like you cut an apple in half and you leave that apple on the table all day long and it starts to get kind of brown. It's got that sort of brown apple smell. That's what oxidation can smell like in a wine. It kind of gets brown. Okay, one thing that I'll say is that that sort of melon and honeydew did sort of slightly turn over to more of like a banana. Um, and banana is uh, something that uh, can be detected in certain flaws in wine. Um, I think there is slight oxidation in this, but like I said, overall, I think it held up really nicely. So that's a really good sign. On to wine number two. Okay, with the second one, I used this little Little closure here this little rubber closure and all I did was to take a really sort of like cheap plastic pump that just sits on top of the rubber closure and gets all of that air out uh, removing the air from the bottle and again oxygen is going to be the main killer of your wine so you should be able to hear a little perfect there was just a little hiss and that's what I wanted it tells me there was a good suction there and I got most of the oxygen out. let's see how she does Make sure to volatize the esters, opening up those aromatics. Okay, let's take the nose. Oh, interesting. Okay, I am seriously baffled right now. Um, I kind of thought that this was going to be... This is defying my expectations for sure. Um, I'm having a hard time finding the nose on the wine. That's really interesting. I can definitely get it when I get my nose really deep in there, but I, I, I should be able to smell it way out here, and I'm really reaching for it. I can't find it. Okay, here's my theory. Oxygen, as much as it does attack and kill your wine, can also interact with, again, volatize the esters with your wine and open up those aromatics, opens up the esters in the wine. Um, and in fact, that's the whole reason why you would put a wine in a wine barrel, right? It's so that that oxygen can come in, those trace amounts of oxygen, and interact with the wine building complexity. I think that trapping that oxygen in the bottle by just placing the cork back in allowed the oxygen to open up some further aromatics and further complexity in the wine. This wine, which had all the air pumped out of it, didn't get a chance to do that, and I think it's turned the wine kind of muted. So weird. <sighs> Same on the palate. Oh my gosh, this is a flabby wine. Wow, I I'm, I'm seriously did not expect that. Um, and what's funny is I tend to pump a lot of my wine, so um, I, I think I'm learning that maybe that's not the best thing to do. Let's try that third option. Okay, so I actually have to go ahead and open this up because remember, on the third option, I never opened up or, excuse me, popped open the cork. Okay, so for this wine, I used what's called a Coravin. I'm not sponsored by Coravin, but if you're out there, Coravin, huh? which is kind of a cool device that uses that needle to puncture the cork and sprays in argon gas, pressurizing the bottle and spilling out the wine without having ever had to remove the cork. Kind of a cool thing. <sighs> Smells great. Yeah, the intensity's still there. Still that really fresh fruit. Oh, incredibly vibrant on the palate. So this held up as if I hadn't even opened the bottle. And you probably can't see it too well, but there is still some of those little bubbles that I was talking about um, in there. I don't know how well you're able to see that, but um, 
yeah, the, that, the, that is kind of a cool sign because it kept that really fresh structure in the wine itself. Yum. Okay, with that, let's move on to the reds. Okay, so same thing here. This is the first one where all I did was put the cork back in. Let's see if it's anything like that white wine where it started to take on more complexity as it oxidized. Oh, that smells really, really good. Yeah, I, I really think, you know, we talk about decanting a wine, right? You decant a wine to allow the wine to open up. It gets really tight in a bottle, and those aromatics do need oxygen to open up. It's incredible to me how impactful that really is because this smells amazing right now, and it's been five days. Wow. Yeah, that palette is really rich. Still some of that creaminess, really um, that aged fruit is really velvety. Um, I think this has opened up almost to perfection. I, again, I'm kind of stunned here. Okay, let's see if the air pump closure can redeem itself. Okay, the nose did hold up a little better on that one, but I do get those oxidative smells in there. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. No, uh, the complexity on this one is just completely robbed. I am really in awe. Okay, so far my expectations have been completely subverted. Let's see what happens with the wine that I used a Coravin on. Oh yeah, that is really fresh. Yep, like I never opened it. And you know what? The palate needs to open up a little bit. I can't believe it. The wine actually needs some time to be decanted. I want um, a little bit more aromatics. It's still a little tight. So yeah, I would want to either decant this or leave it open for a little while. Wow, I am really, really surprised. That was a really cool experiment that we did here today. Um, I, I gotta tell you, going into this, I really thought that the wine that was just with the cork in it um, was gonna be the worst off, that it would have oxidized at this point after five days, and that the wine that had the air pumped out of it would have been kind of the medium one where you know it held up the best, and then the wine where we used the Coravin would have been absolutely the best, that the Coravin held it to perfection. When in reality, it turns out that using just that cork um, was perfect for decanting the wine. It allowed the wine to open up and interact with oxygen and develop some of those aromatics and complexities. Kind of cool. Here's a warning. I would say this. Uh, from experience and probably from your experience, I would be careful about going more than five days. I would say that that cork will probably start to fail. Remember, oxygen is the enemy. It's going to eventually turn that wine over, turn it into vinegar, um, oxidize it really bad again that sort of round apple but if it's within five to seven days you're probably looking at a pretty good holdup for your wine and it's up to you if you really subscribe to that air pump thing like I did um, continue to use it if that works for you but I have to say after this experiment I'm probably not gonna use that thing anymore because it seemed to rob complexity from my wine and kind of turn it flabby so what's the final verdict well unfortunately there's no definitive answer to that question you know, there's a lot of variables to think about. Even think about, I only took a glass of wine or less out of each one of these bottles. If I had taken half a bottle or more, these wines would have failed a lot sooner than five days, probably within three to four days. But on top of that, you wanna consider high quality wine versus low quality wine, young wine versus new wine, and yeah, how much is left in the bottle. My best recommendation is drink it within two days of opening the bottle, and certainly no more than three to five days at most. All right, winos, well, it looks like I've got a lot of wine to enjoy here, but you know, let me know in the comments, what are some ways that you guys close your wines? How long do, does wine usually last for you? Is there a trick that maybe I don't know about, or is there something you would like me to try? Yeah, I'm definitely sticking to that wine with just the cork in it. That was really good. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, be sure to leave me a like. That helps a lot. Share with your wine friends. And until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. Okay. And I'm just gonna get closer and closer to my face, making that weird face as I do that.